I was getting ready to record a video and this Inside Star Citizen popped up, so I figured we could go over this real quick because I'm probably not going to cover it tomorrow. Um, this is a really short Inside Star Citizen, but it is a quick news drop, mostly covering what's coming in 4.0, they're saying. I'm thinking maybe there might be a surprise in here. Maybe we'll see something about the Guardian or a, uh, a little feature that they haven't talked about yet coming into 4.0, but ultimately this is looking fairly... To be honest, this is not standard. So usually their last episode of Inside Star Citizen, they like to cover over the last year as well. Um, they also like to give a little sneak peek of what's coming the next year. So we'll see if they do that this year, but whether they do or not could say something about how they feel about how this year's gone. Let's, let's jump in and then we'll talk about it afterward. It's December and teams and studios around the world are working diligently to release Alpha 4.0 into all players' hands before the end of this year. And on this last ISC of 2024, we're gonna take some time to revisit many of the aspects that we hope will make this patch the biggest in Star Citizen yet. So let's jump on in with Patch Report 4.0. Somebody commented on my video yesterday that that empty patch is empty. <laughs> some people truly i mean it's the same thing that happened with 323 you lose the feature that you care about and the patch literally loses all value whatsoever i see oh van duel against humanity cards down here <laughs> good times oh and remember this is just a quick summary if you're looking for an in-depth nitty-gritty of each feature check out all those dedicated episodes we just did you'll Ooh, or or subscribe now I'm kidding check those out they're pretty good learn more from the developers than you ever will from me so let's do it <laughs> dude they love so many of these videos with people just getting punched in the face I'm gonna make a montage of that someday it's hard to pick the most important element of Star Citizen Alpha 4.0, but any conversation must server meshing must start with the arrival of server meshing. Okay. The underlying <laughs> technology that will increase player capacity and server performance for years to come, with its first iteration allowing for the largest expansion of Star Citizen's universe yet. And you'll get to that expansion through our first jump point, connecting the Stanton system we've known and watched evolve since 2015 with the nascent Pyro system, as players and spacecraft alike traverse back and forth between two different star systems. I haven't actually not had enough times in the jump point to know whether I like it or not. It's a very cool experience, at least for that first time. I'm sure if you're doing it all the time, it'll get old, but the most important thing about jump points I think we need to see now is enough content within each system so that you don't feel like you need to use jump points a whole bunch. But I like what I've seen. They, they're pretty cool. And it's, you know, like a lot of the other things that they've done with Star Citizen, it actually fits pretty close to what they said it was supposed to be back in like 2015. Of course, once you get to the pyro system, you'll encounter a new array of space stations and asteroid bases, each providing opportunities and challenges galore as you navigate the worlds of Pyro's various factions like Rough and Ready, Headhunters, and the Citizens for Prosperity. So we've experienced this. I've actually had some pretty good times in these locations and I haven't even played them realistically. I'm not gonna lie. These areas, and the, this is before we've gotten to an open environment where there's a lot more players. In these early tests, when and things are running stably, these areas are some of the most fun I've ever had in Star Citizen. Uh, hands down, the contested zones offer so much more of a long, drawn out experience than any combat scenario we have in Star Citizen right now, except for maybe like Siege of Orison. But that's a dynamic event that you have to wait for and you have to do. And once it's happening, everybody's doing it at the same time. This offers really nice bite-sized pieces of the game where you're using loot, communication with friends, um, you are doing FPS gameplay, you're keeping track of medical, you are connecting dots in a puzzle through fuses and stuff. Like it's just a very applied version of Star Citizen. 
that we haven't really been able to get yet. So I appreciate what they've done with these locations. It's nice that they've added in them in as these hot spots for more dangerous gameplay. I don't think, I hope at least that doesn't mean that the rest of the game is losing that danger. It doesn't sound like they are based on how base building's working, but this is supposed to be like a, a lightning rod for this kind of stuff. So I don't think we should be worried that it's removing the sandbox aspect of danger in the verse so much as it's just creating a central point where people know they can get that gameplay and i think they've done a good job the contested zones the asteroid bases supposedly are the same in each one which i think is rather weird considering the tools that they've had to build this stuff out but we'll give them time to diversify build their assets in their libraries okay missions are going to be important here and i've seen a couple spawning in but we'll see what else they have to say about them during in this video and within these locations, you'll discover my pick for most exciting new feature of Alpha 4.0, the Contested Zones, where citizens will battle it out against NPC and player alike, solving puzzles, holding positions, and moving from zone to zone for a whole host of interesting and unique rewards that will continue to grow in subsequent patches. It's some of the best Star Citizen gameplay we've gotten combat wise, but it's gotta run well to work. And that all comes back to server meshing. Something that I don't appreciate about this launch though. Like you just heard me say, I'm very excited about the combat portion of this, but when these were originally pitched, and I know that's, that's such a loaded statement to make when it comes to Star Citizen now. So many things were originally pitched. Things have to change. We've seen that. We know that. We are going to have to watch that happen again and again. But if you're going back to when these were pitched, it wasn't that long ago. This was just last year, last CitizenCon. Um, the locations... Gosh, is this even the right panel? The locations, yeah. The locations they showed us for this... Gave you a sense of course of combat, but also a real sense of like what makes this place different, which is just how abandoned and dark and destroyed it is. And the unique possibilities that offers you in a game like this, where there is not much of a law, there's not much of a system, there's the chance that you might stumble across something that's like 200 years old. You just don't really know. And I think we're missing a little bit of that in the marketing going up to 4.0. Not that I think it's missing from the game, but they're not really messaging to people that contested zones and asteroid facilities are not just for combat. That's a big part of it, but they also do want them to be a little bit of like an exploration and, and find stuff sort of place. I know what you're already saying in the comments, that's not gonna work if you're allowing PVP in the same space. I'm just saying that's how they pitched these locations and they clearly changed since then. But this was the original. On, check, mate. So, it didn't say too much, but you go back to the Inside Star Citizen episode about these locations as well, and they're also talking a little bit about what they wanted to do in terms of people getting to like come in and, and, and just sort of find stuff. And I'll say this, it's, again, it's paid. not that that's missing from what we're getting in 4.0. It just, it's very combat focused, and I think there are people who will enjoy or be interested in stuff in pyro that they're not necessarily showing in all of these videos so don't just think of pyro as a place to go only to get shot at that being said i've, I've mainly been getting shot at <laughs> and that's another thing we're going to get to is like the reputation and factions are something that's haven't been working in the ptu too well so i think that's also a big part
Then, when you're ready to explore further, the planets and moons of Pyro offer 11 new terrestrial locations full of adventure and commercial advantage aplenty. With its six planets and five moons playing host to a variety of encounters to discover in settlements independent, outlaw, and derelict alike. Junkyards where new mission types can be found, and even farms for those looking for a more peaceful life. And within and around those- The locations are fantastic. They are fantastic. We've waited a long time to see these locations. So anybody who's been following Star Citizen for a while, you remember it's all the way back in like 2020 that they started showing us those 2D sketches of the pyro, the colonialism themed outposts. I can probably find one for you guys real quick. Uh, jog your memory a little bit. There we go. Remember this? This is all the way back in 2020, four years ago now, uh, were the first signs of these outposts we were seeing. And it <laughs> clearly took a long time, but they they do, they're phenomenal. They're good. They're way better than the locations we have in Stanton. They feel like they're actually built for society, for community, for from people and not just some prefabbed box dropped on a moon that you can go and walk into and there's two or three rooms. Some of these have multiple stories. Some of them have basements. A couple of them have elevators that go into underground rooms where it's not too much there, but it's like another level to the location. Another great thing that they don't mention with these locations is you've got these central towns and districts and facilities here there you can find, like he's saying, you know, something like a, a salvage yard like this or a farm like this, or even just a derelict site like this. What they're not talking about though is that often the distance up on this hill over here or in this valley here or down here by this water you've got little um little satellite locations like a little building here with a couple power supplies and a landing pad or a um a small bunker over here with a little garage or a couple of power conduits out here with like a, a watchtower there are other places you can land and visit that are in eyesight at these locations, but they're not connected. So these show that they're clearly planning on these missions that will have you taking ground vehicles out to these locations, or at least having you go to the central location, taking a mission that has little tasks that send you out to these smaller locations. Oh, we got to repair this antenna. Can you head out there? Oh, there's a cave out here that you need to uh, go and clear out. Uh, one of our explorers went down there and we need to find them. Oh, we've got... Uh, a resource we're always getting from this location, but we can't get it now because of some raiders moved in. You co-attack the raiders and clear out this location and bring back the resource. And like, you can see those typical small mission stuff starting to form with these locations. And that's good to see because we know this kind of work is going to eventually go back to Stanton as well. So lovely. One of the places I actually visited, I won't tell you which one it is, is an outpost that actually has a, a collapsed building inside of it. And if you go inside the collapsed building, you can actually descend down into the basement and there's a full cave system that you can enter from there. So they're unique locations. They're interesting. I have had a lot of fun finding them. The only couple of problems I've had so far is that reputation problems are a little weird. I had no reputation, but everybody attacked me. And so we'll have to see if that's working in 4.0 or even properly working. It was supposed to come in with 3.23. It's been a little wishy-washy. Gotta see how the reputation affects which outposts you can visit, because that's very important. We also need a better way to look at them. When you wanna see a list of every outpost in the system, you can't. And if you wanna know which ones are affiliated with who, it's very hard to find out. So these are the little things that are coming in that we notice now that we're getting these bigger systems in, and I appreciate that but I, I, I like these locations. I like what they're doing with them. Oh, it's still muted, oopsies. And five moons playing host to a variety of encounters to discover in settlements independent, outlaw, and derelict alike. Junkyards where new mission types can be found and even farms for those looking for a more peaceful life. And within and around those points of interest, you might encounter one of Star Citizen's growing library of creatures with the addition Cows. of multiple quasi-grazer variants. Nice. 
the not- I actually haven't seen the cows yet. I spent all my time in Pyro. Quite domesticated Copion in service of their captors. And even the small and diminutive Alloprat. Oh, I haven't seen the Alloprats yet. I wonder if you can eat them. I only say that because they serve those to eat in Pyro, not because I just see a small animal and immediately think of chomping on it. That would be uh, unlike a tomato. Then beneath the surface of Pyro's planets and moons, and Stanton's for that matter, new caves to be found in styles of rock. Didn't these come in in 324? No, was 324 just the same? Okay, I guess, no, they, I guess these were coming in 4.0. It's, there's been a lot of numbers lately. Sand and acidic beckon the brave adventurer to plunge their depths and conquer whatever creatures lie within. It's good to see, so the significance of that update, it's not really a big deal for most of you. Probably think of caves and they're like, why do I go to caves? There's not really much there. A couple mineables, maybe a NPC or two, but not many missions lead us there. Again, these are the locations they're making so that missions can lead us there. The significance of this update for me is that they are updating the cave type of, or the rock type of cave, which is the original one we got. We've had a long time, always been glitchy, always been a problem. Very difficult to navigate geometries. It's, it's one of those things that's like they made those caves and you wish that they knew when they first made it that it wasn't going to work the way they were doing it. But um, that's game development. I, again, don't have access to every game being made. Maybe that's how other games are made, but trial and error, this is their second version of cave geometry. So this is removing, actually think it, don't think it's removing the old caves, but it is adding in this style to introduce the new rock caves, which will have better platforming for you guys, better navigation, better ways to find your way around, all that kind of stuff. And then slowly, I think they're gonna introduce this to the old rock caves that we already have so that eventually all the caves in Star Citizen are up to the new standard and we don't have the old kind of not great ones anymore. Not a super important update though. Steps and conquer whatever creatures lie within. And okay, this is the all, stuff. This is the stuff the that's not super clear to us is economy stuff. They've talked a little bit about it, but this is where they might have a couple little things that could surprise us. Next major step forward in our ongoing economy overhaul and mission system refactoring. Oh my god, look at how many missions this person has. Sweet Jesus diggity lord. I wonder if this is a this is there's no way this is a real <laughs> this is, these gotta be just placeholder numbers. <laughs> Good God. With continuing adjustments to vehicle components. Whoa. Consumable weapons. Those are exp holy crap. These are expensive. How much do I get for selling one of these? That's almost a million dollar gun. Dude, in this, what was this? A power plant? Adjustments to vehicle. Power plant 200k. I don't really buy many components just yet because of this whole fact that the economy is not really where it is. But I don't remember seeing guns of almost a million credits on the store. Fuel prices, mission rewards, and much more. Mission payouts have been much better. So economy updates are good. Uh, very good. Because... There hasn't really felt like much of a reason to do anything if prices don't ever change or make sense. Prices don't even make sense. Uh, you can get everything for super cheap and you don't feel like you need to make money to keep your stuff supplied. Even when you are trying to keep your stuff supplied, not enough variance in the game to make you want to like upgrade your ship and stuff. So these price changes are at least starting to add that scarcity to the game. Now we need to start seeing reasons to want to upgrade your ship. But I'm really glad that they're for the first time, I think, in Star Citizen's history, bringing prices for both items and mission payouts in line with what we actually should be expecting from the game. One of the biggest things that's always thrown us off is that we didn't know, should I be expecting this much money from delivering this much cargo? Is it like you guys are gonna lower the prices of everything so I feel like I'm doing better getting that sort of payment? Should I be happy with a 8,000 credit payment on a mission like this because the game's eventually gonna balance that way? Or are you guys going to increase the mission payouts and I should be demanding a lot more payment for what I'm doing? And this is the first time they've really concretely told us, no, this is the way that the, uh, the prices are going to go. So now we can finally start to judge the game for that. 
And in FOIP news, those improvements demonstrated at this year's CitizenCon also arrive in the upcoming Alpha 4.0, including head rotation tracking, camera stabilization, a greater range of motion for big mouths, and if you got that big mouth. Overall refinements to the tracking algorithm itself. And then of course, we can't forget spaceships, where the anvil carrick blast shields and opening cargo doors make their long awaited debut. Let's just see that whole animation there. That's gonna make such a big difference to this ship's usage. Oh, big deal for the carrick. That's a good, uh, good glow up for that ship. Yes, blast shields. Dude. And I'm still like wondering if there's any thing besides rule of cool for these blast shields. I appreciate that they're sticking to that and doing that. Like they are, it's it's a little bit fan service, but it's doing something that was supposed to be done with this ship when they were able to. Um, I want to say it's uh, Dave. No, Gabe McCabe. You know, Dave McCabe. McCabe, Mr. McCabe. Thank you for your work. He's He's been, I think, doing a lot of these sort of armor treatments on these ships. I would be interested in seeing, though, if this does protect you in some way from the solar dangers in Pyro, but it leaves some of the glass open at the front, so I don't know. Your thing. Also, uh, what's this mean for the uh, Caterpillar doors? <laughs> you gonna get those soon? Ask John. Should we cut that out? Let's, uh, let's get John in front of camera. Caterpillar? Let's go ahead and leave that comment, shall we? Quantum travel gets its next evolution with new variations to acceleration rates, fuel consumption, and maximum speeds based Come on, on man. each quantum drive's grade in class. You all know that next evolution we're waiting for is the big one. Everybody wants the big update. Give us the new quantum animations. Give us the quantum boost. Do it. Drop the big one, please. We need it. Ah, uh, here's what I was thinking they were going to do a little reveal of today. We have to mention the legendary Space Wolf itself, the Mirai Guardian, makes its presence known and looks to reckon with anyone that called it the Fat Fury in the past. <laughs> Dude, that view looks so <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh my god, the ship looks so cool from the inside. We're just gonna sit quiet and look at the Guardian fly around for a bit. Ooh, I've, I've seen the, the previs on the trailer. Uh, I don't have anything to do with it, but it looks really cool. It's gonna be a good trailer when it comes. Dude, the view, I mean, it looks, it. I've got, I don't know, it's like, it, I kind of like it from the outside. I do, but then I also, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I. It looks very cool. Uh, they're not showing any sort of interior, which is a bit surprising. This is a big, pretty big ship for no interior. Um, so the outside is one thing, but the inside. Oh, man. I, maybe it's not efficient to have those giant pylons sticking into your view, but it looks so cool. I really wish that this thing had the guns on the wings, like right here on the insides of these little pylons. Imagine that, and then you're shooting. Oh, that could have been so freaking sick, but I guess they had some reason for going with two larger guns instead. Ooh, I've, I've seen the, the previs on the trailer. Uh, I don't have anything to do with it, but it looks really cool. It's gonna be a good trailer when it comes. All in all, Alpha 4.0 is shaping up to be the start of a new chapter in the continuing story of Star Citizen's development. And while this will be the last time that we see each other before the new year, keep your eyes on the robertspaceindustries.com website and social accounts for more details about its upcoming release. And from everyone here at Inside Star Citizen, thanks so much for letting us share the people and process of game development with you. Enjoy your holidays, spam John Crew with Jalopy for me, and we'll see you all here next year. Okay. And it looks like there's nothing special to close up the episode. So this was distinctly different from other years. Let's go back to last year's and just a little journey through time to remember how that episode went. Here's how the uh, outro of, of, of that one went.
Now, of course, Alpha 322 comes with more than just vehicles. There are structural salvage, openable cargo containers, new derelict settlements, new hairs for players, new maps for Arena Commander, and more. But since this is our last episode of the year, we have a tradition here at ISC of looking back at everything that's happened the last 12 months and reliving some of our favorite moments. I wonder what happened to that tradition this year. Genuinely, I'm not trying to be smart about that or anything. I, it's like they had things to be proud of for the last 12 months, and I don't know if maybe they just didn't want to do it this year or they weren't feeling like it, but it's interesting that they didn't go over that. Some. They were supposed to do a lot of stuff. They were supposed to do a lot of stuff based on the video we're about to see, and they did quite a bit of it, but I maybe they, they wanted to avoid the backlash. I don't know. And, well, look, 2023 was good. Great even if you gloss over that little rough patch in the middle there. But heading into the new year, all that I can really think about is everything that's on the horizon that's about to make 2024 the biggest and baddest year of our project yet. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to indulge myself, maybe switch out my CIG cap and put my backer hat on and tell you what has me excited about this next year for the Persistent Universe in a segment that I'm calling Disco Lando's Star Citizen 2024 cast. Now, without- So you guys remember how this went. Um, plenty of stuff was, uh, was explained. Quite a bit of it did come in, but some of it didn't. Doing like, specifically, I think the big ones that are mentioned there at least are um, with the preview channel being used more, hacking being tried out, quantum, the quantum boost system being tried out. Those are the, the big ones. And obviously there were other features that people expected throughout this year. And I think a lot of it was building hype for this year. It's going to be the biggest year that we've had. 2023 was game, but like we want to look forward. Distinct difference this year of not choosing to just hype up next year. We don't know what's going to happen next year. Server meshing is clearly right on the cusp of being released to us. And that may take one patch or two patches to clean up and get working and back on track for CIG. It may take a whole year. We don't really know. And they don't know either, so I'm guessing they're not trying to hype it up, but also it's better messaging on their part to not try and just set expectations to be really high. I mean, they're not setting any expectations. They literally just said what's going to happen and then peaced out. They didn't even talk about what happened throughout the whole year. So take of that what you will. Uh, this is the release of 4.0 coming up. We'll see how it goes. That's really, that's it for the stuff that's in the patch. And when I say that's it, I don't mean to say that there's not very much. The things that we're getting are pretty significant. It's the first new star system to ever release. It's the first jump points. It's the most important backend technology we've been ever waiting for since 2017 has finally been implemented. So as far as that goes, fine it's just it's good to f cross that line and be past the point of wait for server meshing server meshing will allow it we could do it with server meshing now we're on to the point of okay server meshing's here get those things figured out i think that's the most important part the locations the contested zones the asteroid bases the outposts those are great the factions that's good the new guardian that should be fun to experiment with but at the end of the day it's passing the milestone of 4.0 that's important and i'm glad they're finally doing that and hopefully it's not too much of a stumbling point in the overall scope of this game because this is just another patch and a long list of them that we got to keep hidden to get to where we want to be anyways thanks for checking this one out i will have a video all about 4.0 probably sometime next week hope to see you there